horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Faster, big fellow! I'll Silver! Away! Silver raced through the night faster than he'd ever ran before. The Lone Ranger held his nephew, Dan Reed, before him on the stallion's back. While the wind beat against his face, the masked man feared for the life of the slim 14-year-old lad he loved with all the selfless devotion of a father. The sinister El Mundo had already made one attempt to capture Dan Reed. Poor Silver Hoboy's Teddy Who. Oh, golly, that never traveled so fast. Tato should be nearby. Tato! Uh, he come. Dan, you'll stay here with Tato and Joe Purdy till I return. Oh, but what about Victor? We had to leave my horse in town. I'm going back for him. Dan, all right? Yes, Tato. Uh, where's Joe Purdy? Uh, him come now. Hi there! Joe, a lot has happened since Dan took your place in jail. Yeah? The sheriff found the man who murdered the banker. You're in the clear on that charge. That's good news. My, my other news isn't good. Oh? El Mundo sent one of his agents to talk to your mother. Yes? Your mother knew you weren't guilty of murder. She refused to sell the ranch. I, I think you know what happens to people who defy El Mundo. You mean... Your mother didn't suffer. Those dirty coyotes. I'll get square. I'm going to tell you all I know about El Mundo and his plans. We're going to do our level best to put El Mundo where he belongs. You may be sure of that. Just tell me where I can find him. He has his headquarters in a subterranean Mayan temple in the disputed territory. He's trying by every means to gain control of the ranches along the border that adjoin that territory. For what? If he can control a narrow strip of land along the border, he can charge duty on all goods crossing between the United States and Mexico. If his plan is to succeed, he must get your ranch. I'll never give it up. You'll stay with Tato and Dan for the time being. When we need your help, we'll call on you. Golly, Joe, I, I sure am sorry. If, if there was only something I could do. Oh, it's all right, Dan. Steady, Silver. Take care of things, Tato. Ah. Uh -huh. You'll be back soon. I'm going after Victor. I suppose there's no use in asking to go with you. No, Dan. Come on, Silver. Sure feel like a pest, Dan. All the trouble I've put you and the Lone Ranger to. Oh, golly, Joe, don't say that. The Lone Ranger wants to smash El Mundo and his organization. 
You're helping by sticking here. And your mom was helping. Uh, Dan, I'd sooner not talk about that. Uh, Tano's been mighty busy since you left. Oh, he has? What have you been doing, Tano? Oh, me make medicine. First, he went all through the forest digging roots and taking the bark off of certain trees. Then he started cooking the stuff. We go to camp now and watch medicine. Well, what kind of medicine? Maybe by and by you see Dan. Tonto. Uh? You, you don't suppose those crooks would harm Victor, do you? Me not know, Dan. You think they would? Oh, me not know. Lone Ranger come back by and by. Him know. If those dirty schemers hurt Victor, I'll... Oh, golly, Joe, I'm sorry. I'll fight them to the finish for what they've done already. If only we could get the chance to fight them. I wish I was riding back to El Pass with a Lone Ranger, wearing a couple of six guns. Long before the Lone Ranger reached the town, he saw the red glow against the sky that suggested fire. Nearer, he saw flames leaping from many buildings in town. Then he saw the people, the whole town, fighting with buckets of water, wet rags, anything that could be found. Ho, ho, ho! Tell me, you stay here. I'm going over to speak to the sheriff, Steady. Wait, boy. Sheriff! Sheriff! I can't talk now. Grab some of those pails and fill them with water. Sheriff! Oh, it's you. How many buildings? Uh, the jail, the sheriff's office, and a couple of stables. We're trying to save the other buildings. What stable? And horse was in the one bag. I know, I know. That's where the worst fire is. They fired the jail first and then the stables. What about the horse? I'm worried. Some of the horses got taken out. A white one? Yeah, I didn't see a white one. I know Dan's horse. I didn't see it. And it's still inside. I don't know. Hey, come here. You can't win there. Come here. Stop that man. Stop that fast man. Victor. Victor. Smoke swirled and eddied in dense clouds about the Lone Ranger. Holding his bandana close to his mouth and nose, he hugged the floor to escape the searing heat of the flames while he went deeper into the long stable in search of Dan's horse. From time to time, he called... Victor! Victor! Where are you, boy? Hey, Victor! In the crackling of flames, there came a groan, barely audible at first. It was repeated louder. Oh. The Lone Ranger hurried toward the sound. A man lay sprawling on the floor. Oh, no. No, horse in here. Help me. Here. Let me tie this handkerchief around your face. Oh. I'll get you out. No. No, horse here. You're right. Lie still. I'll take hold of your arms. Keep that handkerchief <coughs> over your mouth. Keeping his face in the clear air near the floor, the Lone Ranger dragged the helpless man toward the door at the far end of the stable. Oh, oh. Halfway toward the door, the Lone Ranger saw disaster. The entire front of the building collapsed in a shower of sparks. We're trapped. There must be another way out. Stay here. I'll take a look at the back. The roof will come in any minute. Oh, we're <coughs> done for. Place the mass of flames in the back. Wait. <coughs> What's this in the floor? Looks like an iron ring. Too late. It's a trap door. I think I can get it open. Got it open. The stairway. Keep your face covered. I'll carry you down to my back. Oh, we both get down. We've got to. That's it. Hold on to me. No. 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 time after the collapse of the stable, a red bed of coals gave off clouds of stifling heat that kept everyone at a distance. The air beneath the floor in a sort of a storage cellar was hot but breathable. The Lone Ranger and the man he'd rescued were alive. He's regaining consciousness. Oh. Good thing this tub of water was here. I wonder who he is. Oh. Take it easy. You're not badly hurt. Oh, fire. Yes, there was a fire. El Mondo. I rest a few minutes before you try to speak. El, El Mondo. He come. Are you able to sit up? Yes. I guess so. I'm feeling better. You saved me. You dragged me out of the fire. The fire was overhead. 
We're beneath the barn. We'll have to stay here until the embers cool off. But you saved my life. And my own. It's dark. I can't see. You were masked. Yes. The, the Lone Ranger? Where did you hear about me? El Mundo. You know El Mundo? He murdered me. You're not dead. Soon I will be. There's no help for me. Double cross. Crook. Take it easy, man. Now, what's your name? What's the difference? It was a good name once. It used to be a name that was respected, but now it's... Well, I'm the one that started the fires. And you were trapped. I fell, an iron ring in the floor of the barn to trip me. Yes, I hit my head and twisted my ankle. Oh, what's your name? Oh, what's the difference? What is your name? It was Martin. Tennessee Martin. That's where I came from. They all called me Tennessee. Tennessee. You're Saunders' cousin? You, you know him? I did. He's dead now. Yes. El Mundo got him. I know. Oh, it sure is hot in here. Oh, I sure made a mistake when I joined that cult. El Mundo made me sign a will that left all I own to him. Oh? I don't mind at the time. But, well, my cousin and Jim both own part of a ranch. And you'd made a deal with those two? Yes. If anything happened to one of us, the other got his share. El Mundo got rid of Jim and Saunders, so I owned the whole of the ranch. Now, when I die, El Mundo gets it all. Tennessee, did El Mundo give you poison before you left on this assignment? Yes, he did. And if I don't get back to the temple, I'll, I'll die. You don't know how much time you have? No. Then we've got to try There's and... There's a lot more I want to talk. I, I want to tell you all I can. I finally got my eyes open to what El Mundo is aiming to do, the crook. We've got to get out of here fast. We can't. We're going to try. Hug the wall. I'm going to try to open the trap door. Look out. A lot of the coals will drop in here. Oh, what's the difference? Here it goes. All the way. There. Oh, the heat. It's light as day above there. Light from the coals. Now listen to me, Tennessee. You have stout boots, so have I. We're going to make a run for it. I'll help you as much as I can. Oh, no, no, you go. Leave me here. I'll die anyway. Maybe not. Come on. Get ready to start. The sheriff and the crowd outside suddenly saw two men rise from the embers and run. One wore a mask, the other man limped and leaned heavily on the masked man. The Lone Ranger is alive! He escaped! Run, Lone Ranger! Run for us! A mighty shout went up. The Lone Ranger cried out above the crowd. Hey, Silver! Silver came from the darkness, racing toward the masked man. Now the smoldering remains of the barn were behind the Lone Ranger. Silver was at his side. Who you got with you? Without pause, the Lone Ranger leaped to the saddle. With superhuman strength, he lifted Tennessee, then... Come on, Silver! Quarters of El Mundo in the disputed territory had been built by ancient Mayans. It was mostly underground, with the only visible evidence of few stone slabs that marked the entrance. It had remained buried in the sand until El Mundo found it and converted it to his own use. Scientist that he was, the brilliant schemer had a fully equipped laboratory in one of the many rooms beneath the ground. He knew through his agents practically all that transpired. His sister, Myra, was at his side as his chief aide. But it was not until after the woman was dead that I learned that the one in jail had been replaced. Uh, I've had enough. My patience is at an end. This lone ranger will block me no more. You have plans? Well, I've always had plans. I had plans when I ordered Martin to set fire to the buildings in El Pass. And I had plans when I ordered the white horse owned by the boy to be brought here. The horse has not yet arrived. It'll be brought by a roundabout route. But what good is the horse? What good? It'll be a trap, my Ray. It, it will be the bait. Trap? Bait? Ah. Through that white animal, I'll capture Dan Reed. Oh. Yes. And with that boy in our custody, we will dictate our own terms. Lone Ranger would make no compromise to save his own life, but but he would go to any extremes to save the life of that boy. <laughs> you will see. The 
curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story, before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. To continue our story, Tonto, Joe Purdy, and Dan Reed were in camp. The two boys helped the Indian pour off the surface scum from a kettle that had been boiling for hours. It was nearly daybreak, but there'd been no sleep in spite of Tonto's suggestions. Maybe when this medicine all done, you two fellas catch some sleep, huh? I'm not tired. Uh, neither am I, Tonto. Anyway, I couldn't sleep until I know that Victor's all right. Lone Ranger, go after Victor. Well, then why isn't he back? He's had time to go out, go to El Paso and back. If there hadn't been trouble, why would he take so long? Him come now. How do you know? Me hear hoof. You must have mighty sharp ears. I can't hear anything. Hey, wait. You hear him now? Yeah, but... But there's just one horse. Now I hear it. Toto. Why is there only one horse? Why isn't there two? If he got Victor, there'd be two... Oh, you waste time with question, Dan. Oh, I know. But if El Mundo's harm my horse, oh, I'll... something go wrong. Him carry someone on silver. Hi there. Hi. Otto, give me a hand. Uh -huh. Me help. Steady, Silver. Oh, boy. Who? Oh. what about that medicine? Did you finish it? Oh, it's all done. But me not know if it's good. And we'll have to take a chance. Who's that? Where's Victor? Dan, a man's life first. Yes, sir. Uh, hear me. Take him. You let him down from saddle. Right. Steady, big fella. <laughs> he was conscious until a few minutes ago. He's been with El Mundo. He was trapped in a fire. He has El Mundo's poison in his system. Uh, They've got to try the antidote. Uh, let me get it ready plenty quick. Lay man here, near fire. You're not sure about the medicine? No. No, me not sure. Maybe poison, ancient poison, old Indian sometimes use. If that's true... Antidote work. Dan, you got... Spoon? Here you are. Uh, now, you hold mouth open. Me pour medicine. Are you sure that man's still alive? His heart still beats very feebly. Already, Tano. I'll watch the pulse. Only a few drops go down through. Yeah. That's it. You know the man? Yes. Did you get some of the medicine into him, Tano? Uh. If he dies, it won't prove that your medicine isn't right. It might work if you'd had it sooner. Me mm, feel pulse. Barely feel it. Mm. You want to try to get some more into him? Wait, Dan. There's just a little more strength. Feel the pulse. Oh. Toto, there is a change. Oh. Heartbeat a little stronger now. Oh, golly, if we... Quiet, then. Can... Sorry. Toto, there's a definite change now. Oh. Heart catch more strength. Him live. Do you think so? Huh? Feller live. Now me know what poison El Mundo used. Good for you, Tano. That stuff you cooked up did the trick. Ah. But who this sick fella? His name is Martin. He's called Tennessee Martin. Oh, me know him. Tennessee Martin? Well, that's the name Son of the man his who... partner. This is the owner of one of the ranches El Mundo needs. Before he lost consciousness, he told me that he was through with El Mundo. He can help us. Great. He knows the inside of that headquarters... This is one night that we're going to show progress. El Mundo has lost one of the ranches he thought he had. But what about... Dan, your horse. Oh, he's gone? The stable was burned down. That's where I found Martin. And Victor was inside? No, Victor had been taken out. He'd been taken out before the fire started. Oh, by whom? Where is he? Who took him out? We don't know. Oh, you don't know? Dan, listen to me. I'm going to let Silver have just two hours of rest. And I'm going to take him back to the stable. If anyone can find Victor, Silver can. Victor wouldn't run away. No. Then someone's got him. But what about Tennessee Martin? Well, him sleep two, maybe three hours. And then him waken. Two day rest, fix him up. Turn in, Dan. You too, Joe. Yes, sir. As soon as the sun rises, I'll start for El Pass. Sunrise found two men in the town. They were hard-faced men with the shifty eyes and wary manner of crooks of long standing. They rode through the town's main street until they came to the bulletin board that hung in front of the general store. 
Right there, they paused. Oh, this is the place, Lefty. Steady, boy. Yes. There ain't no other bulletin board in the town. Right. We're ordered to wait till someone comes by before we fasten the notice up. Yeah. Slade. Huh? How long we got to wait before Mundo shells out some cash? I don't know. What's the odds? We're living good inside that underground place. Well, I'd feel better living somewhere else. Smooth talking critter puts me in mind of something crawling. I don't trust him. I don't trust him too much myself. And I wouldn't put it past him to use us till he's done with us. Then kill us off in one of them sneaking ways he's got. He won't get rid of us, Lefty. He might do away with them loco critters that take all his talk about sun worshipping serious, but he's got to have a few fast gunslingers. Where does he get the slaves? Oh, here and there. Lines up anyone who'll listen to his palaver about living for a couple of hundred years and keeps them half drug so they don't think straight. Hey, hey. Someone's coming. Yeah, ain't that the sheriff? I reckon it is. You got the notice, bring it out. Yeah. Where'd I put that? In your shirt pocket. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Start fixing it on the board. I'll talk to the sheriff. Right. Well, you want it, boys. Find me after the fire. Yeah, but you'll get boiling hot along about noon. Hey, what's that you're putting up there? Ah, just a notice. Yeah, oh, Lord, you got to have permission to post a notice on that board. That ain't for the use of everybody. Well, it don't matter to us, Sheriff. All we want to do is the right thing. I reckon if you ain't interested in seeing a spanking fine horse return... Hey, let me see that. White stallion found wandering free, saddled and bridled. Yeah, we found the credit during the night. Thought at first it was a ghost horse. Then we see it was a real thing. Uh, I know of a horse like that that was lost. Yeah, I reckon a pile of others will know a horse like this one that was lost. That's why we're special careful to see if the right owner gets it. We don't aim to give the horse away to just anyone that up and claims it. I didn't say it was my horse. Well, you hadn't better unless you can prove it. Maybe I can find the real owner. Maybe the real owner can come and claim it then. Uh, let's see that notice. You figure the owner will know what's in the saddlebag, eh? He's got to do better than that. You mean in what? Well, for one thing, there's a pair of light shoes in the saddlebag. The owner has to, first of all, tell what they look like. And then he's got to show that they fit him. How about the gloves? Yeah, yeah. He's also got to fit his hand inside the gloves that are in the saddlebag. No, that's downright smart. Yeah, we won't be took in by anyone that ain't the owner. You can bet on that. We're holding the critter over at the edge of the disputed territory. There's a little gully there. That's where the owner's to come. Yeah, maybe I can find him and tell him about it. Good. We'd like to return the horse. We know what it's like to lose a good horse. Yeah, it's downright good to meet a couple of honest men. <clears throat> come on, Slade. We'll get going. Right. <laughs> good morning, Chief. Morning, James. Good morning. Good morning. Come on. the sheriff followed Slade and Lefty to the gully at the edge of the disputed territory, he would have changed his opinion of them. There was no white horse there, no sign of a horse that resembled Victor. Instead, there were a half a dozen men, all as hard-faced as Slade and Lefty, all there with a single purpose in mind. Get the kid. That's what El Mundo ordered. We got everything fixed in town. Let the Lone Ranger see that notice. You'll know it won't do no good to come without the kid because he couldn't wear the gloves or the boots. You see, he's got to bring the kid. But don't kill the Lone Ranger. Capture the kid, but no killing. El Mundo wants to make use of the Lone Ranger, and he can't use a dead man. <laughs> I reckon that Lone Ranger would sooner be dead than be in a spot he's headed for. <laughs> Sheriff. I got news for you. Big news. I know where Victor is. According to this handbill, he's being held. Two, uh, two hombres have him. Lucky thing they're honest. Did you see them? Yes, I talked to them. They're perfectly willing to return the horse, but they're going to make sure the right man gets it. You'll have to find your young friend and take him there. Why? Why? You're reading that handbill, ain't you? He's got to wear the gloves and the shoes who are in the saddlebag. How does Victor happen to be with those men? Yeah. Steady, Silver. Steady, boy. Well, how did Victor happen to be with him? Why, they found him on the range. Which would mean that he got out of the stable by himself. Yeah, Regan, sure. Sheriff, Victor wouldn't saddle himself. Yeah? Maybe those men aren't as honest as you thought. Hey, Ginger. Hey, 
What are you, Silver? Silver's anxious to find his son. He's going to have his head. Come on, Silver. Starting from the blackened and still smoking ruins of the stable, Silver raced toward the west, toward the disputed territory. Crouching in the gully, El Mundo's killers saw the masked rider approaching. Slade spoke. Hey, he ain't got the kid with him. Why not? He's heading this way, though. Stand ready, boys. If we capture him, we should sure get the kid. All right, get ready now. He's coming in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, mister. I didn't expect to find the horse here. Get back. Hey. Now hold on, you Where's the horse? I'll show you. Lefty, no killing. Oh, my arm. I'll be killing. Tell El Mundo that Dan Reed isn't to be captured this easily. You. Hey, let me go. Now listen to me. I'm riding on. If Victor's been taken inside your underground hideout, Let's I'm... see here. How can a man talk to someone like you? There's nothing you can say. Come on, Silver. Boys, mount up. Get after him. He'll find that horse. <laughs> Riding far ahead of the killers, the Lone Ranger kept the rein slack. Silver kept to the trail. His instinct guided him. He raced deep into the desert land, nimbly dodging rocks and gullies until he came to the top of a slight hill. He threw back his head and shrilled a call. And then from the valley came a reply. Silver, that's Victor. Silver wheeled and was away. Three men guarded Victor. Three men who had been given their orders by El Mundo. Directly at them charged the big white stallion with the masked man astride. Hey, hold on, it's a masked man. Remember what the boss said. I'll take those reins. I'll stand back. Now your boss at Tennessee Martin is with me. That's one ranch he won't get. Joe Purdy is with me. That's another ranch he won't get. Tell him the tide is turning. His days are numbered. You wait. El Mundo will have your hide. Tell El Mundo that now it's our turn to take the offensive. Come on, Victor. Dan's waiting for you. Oh, In the next story of this Lone Ranger adventure, El Mundo gloats. We have your young friend a prisoner in spite of you. Look, see him here. Now, oh, Mr. Lone Ranger... I will dictate the terms. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>